Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast as we are going to be previewing tonight's matchup between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Atlanta Falcons, a divisional matchup, NFC South showdown, where I think that all of these games through the past couple seasons have just been such toss-ups that it is going to be Pretty difficult to come to a great guess on actual predictions here, but we're going to do our best, and in order to sort of get to that conclusion, do want to talk about some of the keys to this game. Now, we're going to start on the Atlanta offense. This is a group that obviously has the most pressure, I think, out of anything in this game, considering the fact that, obviously, Kirk Cousins being signed in the offseason, so much was made of. Now, with all of these pieces in Pitts, London, and Bijan Robinson, that eventually they are going to come together and be able to have some real success together. But we're still sort of waiting on finding that dynamic aspect of this offense. Last week, they were able to win the game against the Saints without even scoring an offensive touchdown. So it's not like this is exactly the high-flying start that we were anticipating. But that being said, I think there's been a lot of positives with this group, and the number one key for their success is being able to keep Kirk Cousins clean in the pocket because we have seen two drastically different versions of Cousins throughout this season up to this point of when he is pressured in the pocket versus when he's able to hang in there and make the throws downfield. And it's been really ugly when he has had defenders in his face. All four of his interceptions have come under duress. And I just think that at this point, given his age, given the fact you think about the concept of him being able to sort of follow through exploding off of that back leg and the Achilles that he tore. He just doesn't really seem to have the same arm strength, but it's less about his arm and more so about the entire process of him being able to wind up to make those downfield throws. And a lot of the time with the pressure in his face, you just see him sort of having these short throws, wobbly throws, and I think that he's much better than that. But There's also real limitations in a quarterback that is in his age 36 season, I believe, and is dealing with still recovering, at least to some degree, from a very serious Achilles tear. Now, you look at what the Buccaneers have defensively. They are one of the highest blitzing teams in the NFL, third highest rate in the league through four games. I have been maybe a little bit disappointed with overall their defense. I thought that this was a group that could sort of take that next step this year. Looking at some of their younger pieces like a Yaya Diaby and Kalijah Kansi to really take those next steps. Now, they're still a solid group. You're also missing Antoine Winfield for at least last week. I think he's going to be out again this week, at least based off of some of the early research I was doing on the inactives tonight. So that injuries play a part of it, but that's just the NFL. That's football. That's something that you have to overcome. That being said, though, even if I have been slightly disappointed in Tampa Bay because they haven't re- they haven't reached you know top ten status or anything like that. They are still at the top of the league in terms of a lot of advanced analytics pressure rates, where it's hurry percentage, knockdown percentage, pressure pressure percentage. They are still in that top third-ish of the league that they're going to be able to knock Kirk Cousins off of his spot a little bit, or at least they're going to have the chance to. Who is going to win that battle up front between the offensive line and Tampa's front seven. Now, sort of sticking with a similar theme that theme there as well, can the Falcons take advantage in the run game? Because I was personally at least expecting better than 100 rush yards per game from them. Their offensive line hasn't been awful, but it's not winning up front as much as it probably should be, or at least what I expected them to be able to do. The Falcons only ran the ball 15 times last game against a tough defensive front in the Saints, who are one of the better run-stopping defenses in the league. But I still feel like it's an opportunity 
where just with this group, knowing that you have Bijan and Tyler Algier, <clears throat> both of who are very impactful players in that running game and can provide a little bit of finesse and power combination that I was hoping the Falcons were going to be able to establish the run game a little bit more. I think if they do, it allows for Kirk Cousins to be able to excel in his role a little bit more because teams have to respect the run more. That being said, you know, it's a tough defensive front for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Vita Vea is one of the best interior defensive linemen in the NFL. They are going to be without Kalijah Kansi in this game, it appears. And if that is the case, there is definitely room for Bijan Robinson to get going. And ultimately, what I'm getting at here is I do think so much of this team's identity is going to come down to that offensive line and their their ability to move the ball, move opposing defenses, and keep Kirk Cousins clean, that that is sort of almost the embodiment of who the Falcons are in my eyes. On the other side of this, with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I think the number one thing that they have to do, or at least attempt to do, is continue to build on the run game success that they saw last week against the Eagles. Last season, they were the worst team in the league in rush yards per game with 88.8. But now they have Bucky Irving in the backfield, rookie that they drafted out of Oregon. He's been a pretty productive player when he's gotten opportunities up to this point. They haven't necessarily been great, but last week they had 111 yards and averaged over four yards per carry. Those are numbers that I do think Buccaneers fans should feel at least slightly optimistic. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day, but to be able to continue to establish a little more of an even attack, considering, you know, I love Baker Mayfield as much as the next guy. I think when he has to go into ultimate playmaker mode, almost a little bit of a Josh Allen style run around making plays, I think that that's when the Buccaneers really start to run into trouble. We saw that a little bit against the Broncos a couple weeks ago where, I mean, that offensive line wasn't good. That Denver Broncos defense has been one of the most overperforming in a complimentary way units in the NFL up to this point. But still need, you know, better results on the offensive line. And Baker Mayfield, I mean, he was also sort of running into traffic as well, not making great decisions through an interception in that game. So I think that he needs to be a little bit more clean in those instances. It also does wonders for that offense as a whole if Baker is able to have a competent run game to add to that mix as well. And like I mentioned, Bucky Irving, he seems to be somebody who can really take on a bigger role for this Tampa Bay team. It seems like the Falcons may be without Troy Anderson, their best linebacker, and I think is emerging as one of the top at least run-stopping linebackers in the NFL through the first quarter of the season. So that hasn't exactly been confirmed yet, but dealing with a knee injury, hasn't been participating in practice these past couple days on a short week. I am maybe a little skeptical about his, you know, ability to play tonight. We will see. I'm hoping for it because, again, I've had a lot of fun watching him, former FCS guy from Montana State. But if he isn't there, that is a huge difference maker for the Falcons' run-stopping offense, which has been fine at times, but still not excellent. And when they have been good, a lot of it's been because of Troy Anderson. So that's something that I am definitely keeping an eye on as well, and I think that you should too if you are going to pick this game. So that being said, I have to pick this game right now before we have the final injury reports and I think in this game, I am leaning with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, where they are on the road, which I don't necessarily love, but I also think that they are 
the better team overall. Again, just sort of waiting on the Falcons to actually come into their own offensively. You look at the games that they've won, zero offensive touchdowns in that game against the Saints. The Eagles game sort of just came down to the fact that the Eagles weren't able to properly close that out. I think you know, we don't want to play the hypothetical game here, but the Falcons could be looking at a worse record. I don't know if this is going to be the place for them to be able to correct that. Now, again, the fact that it's on the road for Baker and this Buccaneers team, I don't love, but Falcons are two and a half point favorites, and I would take the Bucks to cover that. Maybe if you want to play it safe by half a point or a point to three, three and a half. But I think the Bucs can win outright as well, and that is my pick for this game for the Buccaneers to, technically speaking, upset. But it's an NFC South matchup. It's going to be gritty. We know that. And also, just in any of these divisional matchups, it's it's always so hard to predict because I feel like a lot of times with these NFC South teams, you're kind of just picking out of a hat in terms of how what version of these teams you're actually going to get. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section on this game. We are now going to be diving into some power rankings for the upcoming week. I'm going to be listing my top 10 teams in the NFL entering week five. So we are going to dive into that. But before we do so, we do have to take a quick break. Do not go anywhere. We will be right back. <laughs> 